We are now moving to item 8.6. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor Erickson, could you please take that 8.6, the guaranteed livable basic income? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the Governance and Civic Engagement Committee at its meeting held on October 6, 2022, considered a presentation from members of the Basic Income New Brunswick Advocacy Group, which requested council to pass a resolution calling on the province and federal governments to work together towards implementing a guaranteed livable basic income. Um, I'd like to thank a few of the members who are gathered with us here today. I see Suzanne White and Rather Han and Gaskin, um, and I'm sure uh, Will Roberts, the um, every talented grad student who's in Ottawa is joining us online. Right. Um, thank you very much for your efforts um, and your support. Uh, the purpose of the presentation that they shared with the Governance and Civic Engagement Committee was to share with Council the benefits and the potential impacts of basic income in the community. Um, such resolutions have been passed by the Union of Municipalities of British Columbia, the Halifax Regional Municipality, and the City of Moncton in recent months. Uh, Council was encouraged uh, to take a leading role in basic income advocacy in the province by engaging with New Brunswick Municipal Associations and its Regional Service Commission. Accordingly, um, Council's the Office of the Mayor is being asked to write a letter to uh, groups that are delineated in the resolution. And I'll get to that shortly. Um, since uh, the presentation on the 6th of October, um, Council has received a number of emails from people in our community um, seeking to uh, urge us forward in our support of basic uh, income guarantee and advocacy on its behalf. Um, and I want to point out a feature of uh, the emails that we've received, and I hope Council uh, is in agreement, a uh, unanimous agreement, that it's uh, a positive move forward, because in all of the emails uh, I received, and I believe it was all that was sent, um, they included a name and a contact email and a postal code to make sure that it was easy to reach out to the people that sent the email and confirm that they were actually members of our community that we represent. Um, we receive a lot of advocacy emails, um, some from very far afield, and it kind of confuses things, I think, when uh, we get a lot of email traffic from people that we're not actually here to represent. Uh, so I want to congratulate um, Basic Income New Brunswick for uh, making sure that that was a feature of their advocacy. Um, it was certainly greatly appreciated on my part. Um, in short, they're asking for a letter uh, to other levels of government to uh, help this policy idea move forward. Um, in addition to those advocacy letters, um, we've also started to see across Canada um, basic income um, and other ideas like targeted basic income actually show up in real public policy. Um, so on October 24th, the Honorable John G. Abbott, Minister of Children, Seniors and Social Development in Newfoundland, announced that uh, they will be um, creating a targeted basic income program for youth for serving, uh, receiving residential services. Um, so these ideas are real, um, as real as the motions right now that are in the House of Commons and in the Senate, um, moving through their committee system to see it, if the basic income guarantee concept um, is a good way to reimagine the Canadian social safety net moving forward. Anyway, I want to read the resolution. Um, whereas the growing social crisis and impacts of poverty have downstream effects on our municipality, putting unsustainable pressure on our limited resources to deliver necessary public services and social supports as we struggle to keep up with downloaded responsibilities, and whereas basic income addresses key social determinants of health, such as income and housing, it can alleviate the pressures on municipalities to address poverty and fill gaps in social supports, such as shelter, housing, food, security, and mental health. Research and pilots have shown that when people have sufficient and secure income, their mental and physical health improves. They have the capacity to secure more affordable, suitable, and safe housing, childcare, healthy food, and transportation, and poverty rates decrease. And whereas the provision of guaranteed livable basic income would benefit individuals, families, and communities, and protect the most vulnerable in society, it would also support community resilience by facilitating the transition to local economy that responds to the climate crisis and other major social challenges. Evidence shows that federally funded basic income that improves people's financial stability is possible, as successful income transfer programs already exist in Canada for seniors, which is the old age security and the guaranteed income supplement, and for parents through the child or Canada Child Benefit. Um, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Fredericton read a letter to the Prime Minister 
New Brunswick Members of Parliament, the Premier of New Brunswick, calling on these orders of government to work towards implementing a guaranteed livable basic income to eradicate poverty, homelessness, and to ensure everyone has sufficient income to meet their basic needs. That's the move. Thank you, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. On the question, Councillor Hicks. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I guess to be honest, I was kind of surprised to see the presentation come forward and even more surprised to see we're having the letter moving forward. Um, I guess for me, I'm just not comfortable. I feel like we need a lot better understanding of the implications of such a broad policy uh, before advocating for it. Like, what is the cost going to be? How many tens of billions of dollars? What's the effect on inf inflation? What is the potential effects on the workforce? I mean, we're in the worst workforce situation we've seen in my lifetime. Uh, we can't get people to fill jobs now. What's the potential effects of that? Uh, what's going to happen with other targeted programs that are in place now? Are they going to be eliminated? Tax credits, different supports? Just a lot of questions. And I, I understand the intention, and I know this would help a lot of people. There's no question. But sometimes the unintended in, uh, uh, consequences can be very far-reaching as well. So I'm, I'm just not comfortable based on simply having a presentation from a group and not being able to really get much other information from various sources. We haven't engaged our business community, either BFI or Business Director Norris, the Chamber, other groups that may be affected, may have some insight on, on the decision. Uh, so with that, I'm not going to be supporting this motion. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor McGarrity. Well, if we look around our streets, um, we've been having a lot of trouble with people that can't afford to have basic uh, and it's a right, not a privilege, to have a roof over their head. There's lots and lots of, of, of reasons for that, and, and there's no chance we can get involved in something like that, in a discussion like that, I should say. But this is just uh, uh, a support, letter of support. This is not actually programming. It's, it's not talking about money. This is, this is a voice going up to our, our federal members saying, take a look at this, and I'm sure that they would, it, it, it won't happen tomorrow. I suspect it'll take a year or two or three or four years by the time they, they have those discussions and consultations. This is this is a big step. So I, I don't see any legislation coming forward shortly on 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 a major on a major uh, uh, bill like this. So I mean, but I think they have to hear from the people sooner or later that is this something that they should look at. And if nobody speaks out, then they'll drop it. But at least uh, let them do the due diligence, uh, you know, at the federal level, uh, and at least we can support the idea. Um, and what it comes out on the other end, on a bill, and then the regulations, and then the policies and the procedures, you know, I, I'm sure they'll take all those matters into into uh, consideration. So, but right now we 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 have to start thinking about people. A lot of people out there are hurting uh, uh, in regards to not only individuals but businesses, you know. And, and maybe this is something that it's it's high time we have a talk nationally on this and see where our direction is going. Um, there are a lot of world disruptors out there, and there's a mess going on in Europe right now. And and that who knows where, how that's all going to fathom out. Uh, what people are going to be affected in the long run. So, I mean, there's a lot of disruptors and a lot of uh, consideration to be given into this. And this is just a start. And uh, as I say, the city of Moncton probably did their due diligence on this. And uh, as I say, it's just a letter at this time. So I'm going to support this. Of course I am. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McGarrity. Um, Councilor LeBlanc. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just want to thank those that brought this forward. It's a great initiative. I think as Councillor McGarrity highlighted, we're not getting into the nitty gritty of whether we can afford this as a country and as a province. And I think this is just an ask to rethink how we do social supports in Canada. Um, and as someone who's the director of a food security organization, um, emergency services have to become emergency services again. And what we're seeing this year especially, 
as food banks, community kitchens, and shelters operating at a level that we have never seen before. And uh, these were made 40 years ago, <laughs> about. And uh, now we are busier and, and bigger than ever. We're becoming a normal part of Canadian society is that people that have jobs have to visit food banks in order to get by. And it's not a great system. <laughs> and it's a very, very expensive system that is on the backs of charities um, that can't get by. So, you know, things like basic universal income, guaranteed livable income, um, are, are just trying to look at how we're delivering these social supports in a new way and, and, and trying to move things from this current system, which has a lot of inefficiencies and trying to rethink how we're doing things. So all we're asking our federal and provincial governments is to rethink things and to consider guaranteed basic livable income as an option. We're not asking for this to happen tomorrow. We're asking them to look at it and to do their due diligence at their level of government. So I will also be supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor LeBlanc. Uh, Councillor Malay. <clears throat> Thank you, Worship. Um, when we first discussed this at the committee level, I had concerns um, about the role that we play in such a discussion. Um, is it our role as city council um, to lobby the province and the feds um, in something that's definitely in their jurisdiction. And I still still have my doubt that if we should be um, playing that role, that being said, I am reading the room and doesn't seem to um, be wary of the rest of, of council. So I'll put that aside. So on the um, ideal of livable basic income, I, I can get behind it and I mentioned it um, last time that I think um, it's something that we have to look at. And I don't, I don't expect us to do all the heavy lifting. I think that's Ray was mentioned that we're just Right, proposing to take a look at it, so I can I can get behind it. Um, I'm still uncomfortable with the position that we're taking for the reason I just mentioned. I think it leaves that next time that there's a minister of the province sends us a letter um, telling us how to do our job, we can't really get mad at them because we're kind of doing the same same way. But I think overall, this is a positive um, thing for for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Millay. Uh, oh, Councillor Grandy. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, this is, when you look at it and look at where we are today, you know, how far in debt our country is in today, uh, how much, how many deficits we're running, um, you know, and we have so many social programs right now that, that are just, um, really not working, not with a lot of KPIs, not with a lot of strategy and, and that concerns me. So now we're asking for basic income, which is you know, the only people who are going to pay for this is a taxpayer. The only ones who are going to pay for this. And, and I'm just telling you about the struggle in my mind. You know, so how, how far can we ask people to pay? How much, you know, we're, we're going into a total socialist uh, country is where we're going down on, on a path like this. Um, you know, uh, Councillor, uh, my colleague next to me brought up some good points, which is, you know, um, what what other programs are you going to adjust? Are you going to adjust other programs on this? What are you going to do to offset this? You know, what's going to happen? You know, one of the things we talk about as a council and we meet is uh, my colleagues always talk about, well, we didn't have enough time to think about this. We don't have all the details to make a final decision. We got a form letter from a bunch of people, which is great. And yes, the addresses were pretty thin if that's the case. But there's not a lot of detail into this. so. The people who are promoting this, to me, should have had much, many more facts on this. So give us an idea of, the, of, of what a, a federal government budget might look like if you wanted to have a guaranteed income to this. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm sorry, but I'm looking at it from, you know, the aspect of, of our responsibility, which here is infrastructure and uh, services that we provide to the local, local uh, people that are here. Like, I, I, the idea is fine. You know, the idea is fine. I struggle with the mechanics of it. And yes, you know, it's only a letter and it goes up and everything else. But really, I, it's hard without the data for me of information that says, okay, this is how we propose to do this. We'll cut 15 programs that, that are in the federal government side that provide this much assistance and go that way. The last thing I'll say is we're in a real big problem. We don't have enough workers as it is. So if we, you know, the question in my mind, if we provide a guaranteed income, if they're providing your income, what's the motivation to get a job and get a full-time job and, and go it that way when you have 
a basic income. So I see it from both sides. I see it from all the way around. So that, uh, yeah, I just, this is just Bruce struggling with, with the whole thing here. So anyway, just my thoughts on, on the process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grandy. Uh, Councillor Dara. Thank you, Worship. Um, I had to express my concern about it as well, and I had a number of people um, reach out and send me material to read through it. And I understand the, the concerns of the councillors to my left. Um, I get it. But, you know, th this is basically just an advocacy piece. I ended up speaking with our MP, uh, Jenna Atwin, and she's in full favor of supporting this as well. So I can, I, I, after doing my reading of the material that was sent to me, I understand what people are looking for and and kind of the end the end result so I, I'll be supporting it thank you so anyone else like to speak on this if not we'll call the question all those in favor opposed opposed Pike and Hicks um, motion is carried thank you everyone and uh, just to assure everyone, well, first off, I'll say my office alone received 381 letters within the last week on this, and I know many of the councillors received the same letters. Uh, there is, a, and and I also received a lot of really some really thoughtful um, emails and calls uh, with people um, expressing their thoughts, sharing their thoughts, providing information. It um, to put everyone's mind at rest, we send advocacy letters to other levels of government on issues that aren't necessarily within the municipal purview on a regular basis, um, and and this one really is no different. It's asking them to consider something, knowing full well that it is actually it's ultimately going to be them that that designs the program, that delivers the program, that will do the due diligence. It's just a matter. As municipalities, we're well into the game of providing social services to, to folks. Very unfortunately, the only way that we're able to do it is, is through our police department. And thankfully, we have a police department that has embraced that, that has taken on that social work, that has social workers on staff doing it to the best of their ability. Um, but, but it is really the only tool that we have as a municipality. And so it's actually potentially responsible of us to advocate our partners who are actually responsible for delivering these services to rethink how they're delivered because how they're currently being delivered is not working. We know that and uh, and we need a rethink so that when we do make investments, social service investments, they have the outcomes that we want and that we're elevating lives as opposed to just letting people merely exist. So this is simply an advocacy letter to the powers that be asking them to consider this and I have every faith that then they will do the, the, the background, the work that's necessary before any sort of implementation. So I'd like to thank the community for reaching out. It's always really helpful to get that input. And I'd like to thank my colleagues. I can say I know each and every one of you gave a lot of, really, gave a lot of thought to this. We've had two good discussions on it. Um, I think everyone's heart's in the same place. It's just, and, and I want to thank everyone for openly just sharing your thoughts on it. So. Thank you for that.